thing. But Jason and his folks have been, as as they're supposed to, and as I think as everybody would like them to do, you know, have been following uh, uh, adopted policies such as the plan. And when when somebody calls me on the phone, a potential developer, or they come in and see Jason, John, and Josh, uh, we we have a, a, a pretty good idea of what the adopted policy is, and we try to stick with those guidelines. And I think you guys have too. And but every now and then it doesn't hurt uh, to get to get everybody on the same page because we've kind of heard some things lately that you want to you want to change some things around. Maybe look at uh, look at uh, uh, some amendments in the future. And so, I mean, this meeting is probably the first of uh, uh, of two or three or somewhere in that ballpark to get us all on the same same page again. So. And I, I asked Jason, uh, Jason put together, I think I showed you guys these uh, plats of four uh, potential uh, developments that people have come in and explained their interest in, in these properties. Um, and by no means is that, uh, um, is, is this the only areas, but uh, so we have those back tonight. And I've asked Jason just to kind of um, lay out uh, um, the summary of uh, our current guidelines and and what you know we as a staff have been going by and then we'll just kind of just kind of throw it out there so Jason if you want to uh, go ahead with an overview and then we'll go sure. from there so according to the map just so we can separate them a little bit they're the same but not exactly um, got two potential developments within the town center uh, overlay which allows for the same uses as what we've got here for the most part and that's the Chatham property and uh, this one and um, where's the Chatham property that's the one behind the racetrack um, oh, okay. it's got a stream on it's next to you guys okay uh, I so I would say only Chatham. only about yeah that's the the family owners okay. have had it for like 40 years okay. um, just sitting on it and there's a creek on the uh, side closest to Oaks. It's probably only about 60% developable, but that's currently under the town center rates. Um, Snubble Oaks as well, a much larger development, a little closer to the core, uh, but the same jurisdiction and regulations uh, control that. So those are those two, a little separate. Um, but the other ones are the actual the nodes, the activity nodes, the Highway 78, uh, east activity nodes that we developed as part of the 2019 or the 2040 comprehensive plan which we adopted uh, February 11th 2019 and I provided you just with a little uh, you know a few documents directly out of the comp plan and then one uh, document for the mixed use district that corresponds uh, with the highway 78 east activity nodes so if you remember, um, back when we were taking input, um, kind of the vision of the uh, corridor was to contain, you know, a mixture of uses with pedestrian scale and infrastructure for walking and bicycling. Uh, but also, to the biggest implementation strategies were to really some of this area between um, kind of the edge of, I guess, Snellville Oaks out to the city limits a lot of still like older residential single homes and a lot of undeveloped property and I remember one of the most important things for um, that stretch or that corridor was to avoid what we had done in the past kind of just strip center strip center strip center and then build the residential behind it to kind of leave it as more of a green kind of pristine area and then concentrate the development in these nodes and in order to basically, I guess, pursue that and have uh, developers um, interested in making that work, we allowed for the introduction of, you know, basically a mixed-use development. So, and it's a very simple ordinance. Caleb wrote this when um, we wrote the UDO because it was called for in the comp plan. Uh, and it just goes down, you see your building types, um, your mixed use requirements. I think the key is um, they have to have, um, you know, 25% non-residential uses. They can only get the dwellings as they prepare uh, the commercial space. And that was done to kind of create like little mini 
almost like little mini downtown developments to pull all the development to the corners or to the central places and um, in order to get the people to do the commercial portion of it, which is really no money in anymore, uh, just commercial development is probably the reason the Kroger, one of the reasons the Kroger never developed there. We allowed them to have um, these different building types, detached house, carriage house, cottage court, semi-detached house, townhome, walk-up flat, stack flat, um, which is the apartment, which I think is the biggest uh, concern now. Commercial house, shop front, mixed use, general building, and state buildings. And then there's some, you know, some standards as far as what that looks like, grid pattern, push it up close, just like kind of what we're trying to do over here at the town center. So that's what we adopted then um, in 2019. Um, we have about 7,300 um, households in Snellville, from what I understand, close to that based on sanitation records. And including um, townhomes, we have less than seven to eight percent in uh, attached or um, multifamily homes, which is a pretty low percentage uh, for uh, the housing diversity, which was another key component here. So um, that's where we're at. That's how we got here. These are the parcels that are going to be affected the most are the ones that are left undeveloped or are close to redevelopment. So um, I guess we will let you guys talk now um, from a mayor and council perspective. What, what's changed since 2019 um, to kind of reorganize it? What are the concerns, the issues, and we can just we can talk that out a little bit. I would say that the first thing is the amount of apartment complexes that we see going up all over. Mm -hmm. It's not just Lynette, it's not just Southern Lynette, it is all mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. Metro Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And in the Rosebud Highway 78 area specifically, you have that huge, I don't even know how many units are in that <clears> one, yeah. going out to Loganville on the left, across the from... Yeah. Huh? The barracks. Yeah. What's like the barracks? across from that new Legends restaurant. Um, you know, you have that one. Of course, the ones that were on Rosebud to the left of 78 behind the Dollar General, those have been there. And I think those were there when we did this plan. Mm -hmm. But you just look at the type, the <coughs> amount of land from the Snowball City limits to Loganville that's out there and available and probably in whatever respects not as expensive as you know getting closer to a hub that there's probably <coughs> going to be a few more complexes popping up before yeah, I don't know, know what they're building but if you go up Rosebud to Cooper and make a right there's three tracks that make some of them are single family mm -hmm. I mean and there's stuff being built down Brushy Fork mm -hmm. I mean housing Those are single family. yeah right. single family um, but it's, I think it's just the way the development is happening right now that gives me a little pause about coming in and throwing another 300 unit apartment complex at that corner. So is but, it more so when you say just apartments in general, like if the market's supporting them in Gwinnett, metro area, and these aren't, most of these are market rate jobs, some of them are going to be cheaper. Uh, in areas like Loganville, just because of land prices were here, I think we'd have a little nicer product. But is the concern, is it traffic-based? Mm -hmm. Outside of traffic, which we have some control, I mean, but not all, I would argue that the Kroger would produce more traffic than um, any kind of proposal on, on Rosebud. But is it the quality? Is it the housing type? Is it... Yes. Um, because there's... Mm -hmm. The whole adage, um, kind of the old uh, perception that, you know, you get a, a citizen that doesn't necessarily care as much about the city or that the rents are low, it's not really the case anymore. Um, we need, I think we saw in the census that our average median age is like 39. So we're putting in north side, I think we're putting in, we want to put in more job centers, better jobs. They don't necessarily want to live. Um, over on Azalea, they like uh, they're more mobile, older and younger professionals. Um, 
prefer a lot of times not to own. So um, I think there can be a balance with, in my opinion, with quality and a quality of the resident, whether or not they're owners or not. They may not vote all the time. They may not run for council or whatever, but I still think, I mean, you see it everywhere else. They're still engaged. They're still coming to the city centers. And I hate to always use Lawrenceville, and there's a right downtown, mm -hmm. the newer ones. And those are quality, so they got a lot less problems than the stuff they built 40 years ago, which are, you know, as they <coughs> age. But um, the only concern from, you know, we're talking about 2040, if we lock ourselves out now, and the policy directive changes in 10 or 15 years back, we may have missed our window to get the best, right. you know, and that's kind of, you, you might be at a place where you're worried about the lower rents. Right now we've got really big national, like people that have built in the Avalons on the Beltline that want to um, do some of this. So the, my, the concern is not, you know, we're gonna have for me, it's 301 units is what's there in 10 years. What happens in 15 years? Because if we don't do anything, if you're still doing something, which is, you know, that's the biggest worse. concern. Right. Plus, well, and that's kind of what we got to weigh out. But I think when I look at the apartments, like those new ones in Loganville, what I look at is there is nothing close to those. I agree. And every car every mm -hmm. person in that complex is going to come in and out on 78 mm -hmm. there's only that one course. way in and one way out and they've got to drive <coughs> five miles in either direction to, to get, get somewhere mm -hmm. and that's you know so yeah, i don't think that's sufficient either but right I in think these the circumstances here like these are required to put a certain amount of commercial space so there's going to be restaurants, going to be coffee shops, that can maybe you know a nail place or, or whatever, but not going to be as many ins and outs. And I think when I heard you guys, and it was all you guys were on for the complaint last time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, that was the concern, and our answer to that was, well, we're not just going to allow apartments like uh, what <coughs> Loganville doing. They're going to have to tie it to something that's gonna keep them out of their cars a little bit more. And that was kind of our answer. And the, and the code um, takes care of that. I mean, we haven't seen it here in actual, like, what would happen, but I would assume uh, if they're not leaving to go to the grocer or uh, grab some food, uh, and if it was provided on site, that that would cut down on a lot of it. Mm -hmm. It also, and that's kind of the thing, and um, if they're willing to do it now, we can hold them. I believe we're much better than Loganville as far as uh, amenities, services, and uh, if you offer a product that's above what they have, people will come and enjoy it. Um, and it's so expensive to develop now, they can't afford to just build a 10-year product anymore. And I know Lenore Church, that's a totally different kind of... <laughs> enigma of a zoning that was there a long time is not going to be our friend it's probably not now as it takes to do it. but um the stuff that's out here in the road will be pretty similar I mean, i think there's a place for multifamily uh done right high quality that also gives the citizens that we need the opportunity to stay here because we want them to be here and want them to be a part but if there's no housing choice and you're talking about less than eight percent and that's including town limits, so you could go rent a house i guess you know off the of skyland but um a lot of people just don't want that on a maintenance you know these are going to be maintained and associated with commercial uses which to me makes a little more uh less worrisome in the future. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen in 20 years. Um, probably just be a lot more people, but those are just some of the things to consider. Um, well, I think when you and I, Jason, had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about it, I mean, I think it's a very real consideration in that if we, if we shut things down or don't allow something in while we've got some really good developers, looking you know like you just said we may lose an opportunity that to put something of quality in an area mm -hmm. that would be better than us kind of kicking the can down the road and something else of you know lesser quality or lesser design comes <coughs> in later so it's kind of one of those things where 
got to really, really look at a project that might come up and consider, you know, what if we don't do anything and we lose a quality developer? And you can always, too, you can keep your standards high. I mean, with mm -hmm. these developments, you know, that every, you know, there's a level of scrutiny that you can have um, through the zoning process and the law, you know, it backs the cities as far as most of the time what their decisions are. And you can require um, the nicer building materials. You can require more traffic upgrades. Those are all legal uh, ways to ensure that development is, um, is what you want. And if you don't like it, you don't have to approve it. I mean, it doesn't even have to make it to you guys, but when you close the door, basically just, you turn, what do you turn these back to BG and just say shopping center or busting? Um, what do you do with them? That's kind of the next question. If you don't even want to kind of look at what's going on and consider it, whether it's in, <coughs> through a public application or just kind of, you know, on an individual basis as they kind of come in, like we send you those guys, those feelers, what do we, what are we go from there? Because if we're not interested in that, we need to take it out. So if it's not, if the stacked flats or the millennial housing or whatever you want to call it isn't an option, and you could, I guess you could, you know, edit or, you know, kind of delete and add some housing types under 20343 for those activity nodes. Well, when, when you read down the building type requirements for mixed use, um, none of that says non-owner occupied. Um, Is that that's your biggest that, issue? That's my biggest issue. And what we saw, I mean, the development as far as the apartments go, the design, the um, company that came in for the Rosebud Highway 78, that is probably the nicest um, multifamily development that I've seen. Uh, whether it was coming through the county or coming um, uh -huh. through the city, ever. Uh, yeah, very impressed with that. But my, my issue is the, the majority of that development, how many acres is the Rosebud Highway 78? 25. 25. A lot. Of, of which it appeared about 18 acres were going to be multifamily. Um, and when we were looking at these nodes, what I was seen in my mind is something <coughs> along the lines of smaller versions of a town center that there there'll be more of a mix a mix more of a mix and and thought out on the front end i want to see a development that is more fully fleshed out and offers multiple styles of housing in that development okay apartments are fine there's a place for them but it can't be a hundred percent of <coughs> what get, gets put there. Mm -hmm. So what in order to right, so in order to kind of make you feel better about, it, especially the first ones or the ones we kind of dip into, um, you want to have percentage, whatever that may be, of like maybe some for sale condos, perhaps, or um, some for some fee simple townhomes, something. Doesn't the building type's not the biggest concern? It's more about the ownership. Yeah, because quite frankly, I don't know about anybody else in the room, but I probably deal with tenants and toilets more than anybody else. And I guarantee you, or chief of police probably sees the rental property the issues of code enforcement. He sees they tenants, but not toilets. Do. Yeah, but but the you you will never be able to tell me that somebody who can in six to 12 months, if things don't really work to their advantage here, or things, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. That those people will ever be the same stewards of our community that homeowners will. Because whenever you, when you purchase a house, unless you need, you set down roofs. And that that is an investment. Well, you've got an, whether your roots or not, you got an investment. Right. And, right. and um, I'm not saying. No, I, get I, what I you're grew saying. up in apartments, and I I, only half saying. the time I was a horrible person. So it's. <laughs> I was a kid. Still so, yeah, still working on it. Work in progress. But it, it's it's a matter of if we allow that to be. Oh, here's some squares on a piece of paper, and those are going to be commercial. And here's our 
apartment complex, mm -hmm. that's a hard sell for the mayor or any one of us around this table because it's not a cohesive design. Oh, yeah. I agree. I think the design is very important. Integrating it in as well and not walling it off as two separate developments. I agree. And I think I agree for the most part um, that when you do buy a home, you know, there's different you are invested, but I think it also has a lot to do with uh, social economics too. Mm -hmm. Like if you oh, pay yeah. in two grand uh, a month at, a, at an apartment complex, you don't really have, I mean, you may not be, like I said, in uh, running for council, but people are cutting your grass, you know, the apartments are, the, the facility is kept up for you. So if you're in and out in a year, that's okay. Sometimes, I think, but if you have, you know, $800, $600 rents or whatever you're dealing with between renters or a cheaply owned home, it can go either way too. And we've got all that home buying power in Snubble, 92% of our, so, uh, or renting. So, well, just would, a little more mixed, but I understand. I, I would argue that your <laughs> statistics are off because I can go through every single neighborhood in this city and see some neighborhoods are now oh, pushing 80% yeah, yeah. rentals. No, I should have said single family, but yeah. you're right. Um, and, and, and just corporate rentals too, which are worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And, and those are issues that we're having to deal with. Um, I would like to see something along the line of condos because I know as my, as my mom aged, she she didn't want, I didn't want to have to mow her yard anymore. I didn't, and, and she couldn't do it. Um, and a condo was perfect because she still had ownership. She still, but there was no. I think a mix is good because some people don't want ownership in certain parts oh, of your life. You don't, and the American dream, the whole home ownership, I mean, for a lot of millennials and, and whatever is behind them, they just, well, and they don't want the responsibility right. or it's not everything their parents trumped it up to be. Like during the recession, people got scared. I mean, I would never rent long term, but some people in my neighborhood have been there eight, well, 10 the, years. The, the problem, Jason, is because so much is going to corporate rentals, so much is investment is going towards building multi rental multifamily, there aren't, there's not enough housing stock for people who do want to buy. Okay. And now they're now being priced out, and um, and we're going to see that continue. Yeah, and and yeah. right now I have some property that is getting ready to sell, and I am constantly being barraged by people who want me to sell it to a hedge fund because I'll maximize my money, but. It's not what's good for the community that the properties in. Part of the problem I see is density, because the developers come in just like this one at the corner of Rosebud and 78. They just want to come in and slam in as many apartments as they can get in there. I think that lowers your quality. <laughs> I think. And I think it, it overburdens, and then they always play the game. We've got 60 acres, but only 35 is developable. Oh, I agree. So with then that. they slide by and they say, "Well, look, our density is only well, five per acre." We change we that. Can, yeah, we fixed that. But I think too, um, you're able to kind of use density as your friend to a certain mm -hmm. degree. Like, if you can get them, because we heard this from several developers that were looking at the Snowball Oaks, is in order to get the amenities to pay for the Starbucks, to pay for the mm -hmm. acre they're going to set aside for the plaza, to bring in the commercial, which is a, is a non-starter these days as far as um, performa, that to get there they need a certain number. Oh, there's no question. And I then think over, over that, that yeah, of course, we can let, you know, we can look into those. You can I mean, that, that's what you got in Loganville. Well, that's in, you know, the county. Again. Right. The county. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Much I mean, larger. that is a mess. That's oh, it is. I mean, it's, it's just, horrible. and that's everything this uh, Rosebud property to me looked like. It was just well, I think it's a that is every the, square inch we can put an apartment exactly on. That is exactly what we don't want. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there was a lot of commercial in there, too. I mean, there was a plaza. And oh, yeah, it there, wasn't there was, but it just seemed just like 300 and some odd apartments in that area. 
Well, I mean, it's on, a, it's on a major corridor. I mean, if you're going to pull them anywhere, I mean, if you follow the county's model, that's where they're at. 20, 78, 124, mm -hmm. better than 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, No, I don't think we do. Automatically yeah. put up. We want no, I think it's fine. I yeah. think it's fine. I think the well, mixture is fine. What was interesting is when I first mentioned, <coughs> I mentioned to my husband that 78 and uh, Rosebud, I said, we got a concept idea from somebody, and um, it had some mixed use, it had some commercial mm -hmm. and then apartments, and he was like, no. You cannot put apartments there. Boom. That was the end of the conversation. And then, like, three weeks later, we were driving by there, and I said, okay, so let me ask you a question. There's about 20 or 30 acres there, and it's going to get developed. Uh -huh. So not doing anything right. is not an option. It's going to get developed. What would you, if you got to choose whatever went on all that acreage, what would you pick? Sorry. And he was like, well... You know, if they had stuff like a restaurant and, you know, some some storefronts and a restaurant and stuff on it with maybe some apartments and things like that. So then he explained back to me exactly what right. that proposal was. Right. Yeah. That he said, no, you can't do that. Yeah. It was Initially, just the word apartments. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> well, because that's what that Loganville... Right, and he said, you know, picture. if it were a place you where that. you could come out of your apartments and there was some places to right. hang out and, Walkable. you know, stuff like that, then, you know, but I just thought that was yeah. interesting mm -hmm. that when you ask it in a different I mean, I way. Don't, I don't think I would mind a development where there is, like, mm -hmm. Some commercial development, a walkable area, some green space, some green space. Or she doesn't have that sprawl look to it. Right. right. I think that's what a barracks do. look. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what brings in the higher paying tenants. And exactly. I, I will tell you that they're here, um, and actually heard from one developer that now the um, numbers are better going down 78 towards Loganville than they are uh, even on middle 124. By so, number, you mean? Like. Medium, average income, mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. social economic numbers, so ability to spend, uh, you know, because it's kind of pushing out that way. So what I heard was not close the door, involve some kind of mixture of ownership, and then... Um, and quality. housing types. Housing types, right. right. Yeah. And, and quality. And, type. yeah. and, and the good news is we're in a position right now yeah, where we really have some leverage. The mm -hmm. most will probably And that's, right. that's where, you know, that bad feeling gets in our stomach that mm -hmm. down the road we aren't going to have right. that leverage well and you know it, it's 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 and just talking to the north side folks um north side is inter was interested in this property because they felt like they could attract employees and move employees to snellville because of what's going on in the town center right uh, there are <clears throat> when we talked to maxi price about uh, Highway 78 and Grayson Parkway. We talked about a mixed use of how we talked about mm -hmm. owner occupied. He's going. He's going to take that back and try to work that in. You know, he, he obviously didn't do anything fast. I guess he's owned that property for 50 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's so you know people are listening to this type of. Thing. We just wanted to make sure we're we're hearing you. Correct. So we can send out the right message. Well, I think we're doing another town center. You know, we had all these proposals that we didn't like. And we basically said, right. here's what you got to build. Mm -hmm. And found a developer who would build it. Well, the, right. the so. flip side of that is we've invested, what, about city-wise $30 million in our town center yeah, and how more. many years and all these hours. Um, <laughs> and it is starting to generate interest. But... <laughs> If we sell ourselves short on the, if we don't have that much available uh, open space, developable space. If we sell ourselves short, what will happen is we will build the mecca of all meccas, and we will have said, "Oh yeah, 
that, that half-assed development is pretty good. And then as soon as the magnet that we've built is there, all the development will end up going around Snellville because we built such a fabulous opportunity that they all want to be here, but there's nothing here. You so, mean in the town center specifically? Well, no, I'm talking about these nodes. Okay. I'm talking about <clears throat> the open space that we have. If we, if we, uh, <clears throat> if we are too quick to let development happen, we may actually miss the peak. Well, kind of this is like a two-year like plan, to dilute set, our, right? The town center. Yeah. Hard to dilute the drama. Like, so if, even if they were to come in now and get approved for one of these, let's say yeah. six yeah. months, sure still there. I mean, they're probably not occupied for about three years. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. But I understand the cannibalism. I think there's a different market for both people. I think the yeah. town center is going to. You're going to be surprised yeah. what it looks like in 15 years. I think it's going to be very dense. There's going to be some big changes just because. The county, the state, mm -hmm. the world, is right. Right. Mm -hmm. and it will too because it's set up. And I think there's yeah. a place for both. Because we're just talking about max. You build all these out less than a thousand units, so it's not a necessarily a tipping point in the town center. The town center is going to be awesome. I mean, right. Right. right, and I agree. That's why we keep the standards up. But people are some people are going to prefer to be in the mix. Some people have to have that. That's why people yeah. love yeah. living in cities. Not yes. people. That's um, my um, but others would rather just have a place to go home to, walk their dog. And, and do you have yourself. to keep in mind that we are all elected by the citizens who are here now. I understand. We represent the citizens who live here now. And they moved here to be in a bedroom community with three quarter acre lots. Some did. A lot of them did. They they want the I get it. But so, you guys have to make the hard decisions too that are best for the city down there. We aren't abandoning those folks. No, no, no I understand. It's not as but if when we you, can't still provide that. But I well, know what Todd they get you get heat about a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's un it's really misguided. Um, well even I really uh, I usually don't mess around on Facebook with these people about the mm. growth. They are mm -hmm. so off kilter on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like even just basic knowledge is right. missing of what's going on. And usually you just educate a tiny <coughs> bit. You can't educate. Well, you try. And trying they, to educate I know, for but 10 they years. They don't listen to you guys. No, anymore. we've been posting it. Solange posts it. Dave posts it. Chrissy, and we all post yeah, it. Just, Got off Staff Facebook. Posted. That makes me so crazy. And, and, and crazy. you know, we campaigned on it. it makes me crazy. We've I think had it has press to releases it has to and people like still are like, it, it has oh, to happen. There it people, has to happen. And they people, have to see it and go down there and just, just like, want to oh complain. My God, this is amazing. I mean, look at look at the neighborhood market. That's what I was thinking about. Same thing. Remember that? Oh, that's I mean, terrible. That and and we're gonna have eighteen wheelers driving down. They're gonna be sitting back there all night long. Yeah. No, I don't know one eighteen wheeler. This went down. Well, you know, so why was, would you go down there when you can go out on your own 78? It made no sense. Right. But, but, it, but those people were fired up. Yeah. And oh, yeah. It was a, once it's there, I bet you they all yeah. use it. Oh, they all use it. Most of them love us. So, yeah. more. so, yeah. so I think, you know, I get it. Yeah. I understand. I think, there's a, I think there's a line we can walk and make sure. I think as long as we have good quality stuff, I think that's, you're the going to get complaints, thing, yeah. but if it's good quality stuff, in the end, we'll right. Well, and it'll sit there on its own whenever, you know, for now and in the future. If it's quality, the people that funded it and financed it, they can't afford for it to just depreciate. Right. Now, of course, some depreciation will happen. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes these things are shooting up. It just depends. I think it's the quality is the key yeah, aspect. For sure. And it's, I think it's what you have going in. If, Mm -hmm. If the builder comes in and says, "Here's what I want to build," say, well, it's not, but right. okay, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to get. If you right. say, "No, here's what you're going to build," right. mm -hmm. well, then we have that opportunity. Then they step yeah. up, and they're going to be at a higher plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I had a, I was contacted by Jeff Timler today because he had a rezoning um, yeah. for Crestview and Seven. Yeah, Danny Herman. Yeah, yeah. last night in down zoning. He, yeah, he let me know that um, currently. <laughs> The developers who are interested in Rosebud and 78 are letting their contract lapse if they haven't already pulled it. So if there is something that's going to be potential there, um, we need to let them know that we're willing to work with them. If well, let's that's reach what back out and see what we can get. Because um, those are the best guys I've seen in yeah, ever. I mean, you look at their 
their list of where they had been. Like Snellville, for where it is locationally, was the outlier. Like right. they are downtown, big time, like Beltline developers. So if anybody's got pockets, um, and they believe in the area, and that's kudos to you guys. I mean, they're right. willing to come and well, and, uh, and they just they just need to know to sharpen their pencil on the, the, the rest of it. I think we can get there. We'll so, at least you know, open it, up conversations with them. Something you just said, that even if all of these properties built out, kind of like what we're talking about, you're talking about maybe a 1,000 right. more residential Next, right. 1,500. Yeah. When, when you think about that in, a, in perspective of the entire city, you know, that that's a little more palatable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that... You know, at first you, you start thinking, oh my gosh, 300 units here and 300 units there and, you know, all of this stuff. I think if we can manage the sizes of those developments to where we're not packing in right. too much right. into, into the <laughs> smallest space. I agree. You have um, to have the infrastructure in place. And, um, and even then you're less than 20% on uh, multifamily, which is I mean, a lot of <coughs> metro areas are way well, but. But again, we are a traditional bedroom community. Right, traditional. So, so, and have been. So to say we need to have the same multifamily that oh, say they have in Doraville or um, something like that is probably a yeah, north process. But well, then the we next will thing, get there. We will get there yeah. population-wise because people, oh. Georgia is booming. Metro Atlanta, Gwinnett is booming. Well, Snellville is booming. Like there, if there's land, it's going to be something until you get out to between, and the rings are growing. So yeah. it may not like the bedrooms will still be there. It'll just be a different mix on the right. corridors, mm -hmm. and we can control that now. Um, you know, when we got leverage, we lose leverage. And, and I, I think if we can create some of the job centers, mm -hmm. we, right. we well, can even improve well, a little bit the traffic. Things like Northside coming in, and I mean. Yeah. That's a big you know. get, by the way. I think yeah, that's, that's going to be really nice. Mm -hmm. That's all true, but if these nodes all become 70% residential, where are we going to get the jobs? Because right. all we have is large scale commercial uh, retail. Well, town centers. Yeah, but well, we got to grow our jobs around the hospitals. Oh, yeah. well. Medical. Um, but you're not going to get a hospital in Rosebud in 78. Probably not even going to get an office complex just because it's not where they want them to be. So, kind of right. the outliers. I think we'll get the jobs. And Gwinnett is doing a lot for jobs, too. I mean, they're, we just you know don't have that traditional highway to get mm -hmm. the, the manufacturing, which isn't going to ever be our thing. We got to build around tech and medical and stuff like that. But okay, I think uh, I got through mine. Something um, you might want to just add into that that just come up. It's one of my clients that do a course. Um, but in the higher end, um, no type apartment complex like this, they are building offices and building centers into the complexes. Nice. So that people that want to work that work from home, if they need to host a meeting, mm -hmm. they can rent it for the day, for the hour of the day, the week, whatever, and they actually have us a front there so that they can keep that the people in the node, mm -hmm. like a little business where it thrives, kind of yeah, a little, kind of, thrive. a little a thrive, thrive, but it, on the like know, a hotel, form. you know, if you're staying mm -hmm. there. But they're not even, but they're not even permanent. They're just like hot desks or whatever. Right, right. they're yeah. doing that in the town center apartments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So just that's something we might want to incorporate. Again, that to kind of give it more of that mix. That's that mix there, right. kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. That's good yeah. to know. And in, mm -hmm. another thing you're doing, um, all interior access into apartments. Oh, definitely. So you know. You right. Know, right. That really ups the quality when mm -hmm. you, you you know you don't have that. I call it the Howard Johnsons. People yes. don't know Howard Johnson more, but um, yeah. You know, yeah. Thirty-one flavors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you have the interior. Right. Um, nice finished hallways, right, right, right. 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 hotels, those kind of things. You could add those into your requirements. Yeah, most of the guys we're seeing are building that kind of yeah. stuff, but it does lay out a better. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to pull some code because this was very simple. Caleb just wrote it to wrote it to basically fill a need, so we can refine it and you know look at some of those too. So I have here, Jack. Mm -hmm. No, no, please. it's good. We need to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I want Josh to talk. I've never heard him speak. <laughs> oh, I've, I've talked to Josh lots of times. <laughs> I'm glad he's here, but I miss him not being what I need him in the county. Y'all <laughs> are welcome to pull up and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely.
Oh, I'll 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 my course. stuff. I'm over here <laughs> taking my <laughs> <that. I'll laughs> <that. I'll laughs> John just tells me I'm wrong. Josh is sucking it all in. John just knows he's going to have to have good notes so he can remind me of what I said before. Josh is oh, we got you. Oh, we got it. I've got you. Yeah. What, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah, that's what Josh is saying. What have I gotten myself into? I had a really good job, and then I took this one. No, he came in accounting, so he leveled up. To follow up on my conversation with Jeff Timler about the rezoning on, at Crestview in 78, some of the feedback that I got from people who were at the meeting was that the um, design kind of looks blah. You, all you see is a whole lot of roof. And um, somewhere, uh, I'll send it out to everybody, I have uh, a link to the developer's site. And when you look at their structures, if you sell shingles, you're going to love these guys. But Because <laughs> they have a really big yeah. pitched roof to kind of so, add depth to it. Yeah, it's a single story with big Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it... You can clean that up a little bit. Right. I, so just I, start looking at it. Right. We'll get them. Well, and, and I'll make sure that everybody gets a link, including staff, to that. Their so stuff is good, at, but you're right about the um, roofs. Well, yeah. if, if we want to become a place that people want to come to, the development that we get, we allow, needs to look the part. Right. And... Um, I so, so I already had that conversation with him, so his client will know, and we'll get to work on that. Okay. Um, I would say that there was evidently a gentleman at the meeting who is our new Jared Blankenship, oh. who oh, really? can't hear. And it was more than that. Okay, well, but that was only part of the problem. If can't hear, can't see. <laughs> can't hear, can't think, can't see. We need to make oh, sure uh, that we have some headsets or or personal speakers that people who are hearing impaired like Butch. Um, <laughs> What's that? Can, he does that on purpose. Can can uh, can be accommodated because whether they really need it or whether they claim they need it, if we don't provide it. And Chuck may be we able to. Okay. Yeah, we do. Okay. I need to know where that stuff is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, it, he was talking the whole time. That's why he couldn't hear. Right. But <laughs> oh, that would you gotta watch. That You'll see him. You'll see him. I'm to turn, make sure he was back. But I just don't want us to ever end up in wait. court because someone can claim. I couldn't hear anything because they didn't accommodate me. We made that investment a long time ago. Okay. No, nobody was going to satisfy Jared. Uh, no. Yeah. It's, on our, it's on our meeting announcements, I believe, isn't it, at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we is. provide the well, meeting announcements? We need to make sure that our, our chair people <laughs> and staff make an announcement. If anybody can't hear me, <laughs> We have, we have hey, equipment hey, to For everybody who can hear me, raise your hand. And if someone doesn't raise their hand, Get it to them so yeah, they probably need to have that as just policy at the meeting. A little blur. <laughs> well, beginning. mentioning yeah. it. Right, that's what they I mean, Yeah, just mm -hmm. getting it out there so down the road they can't go. Oh, nobody ever said anything. No, you got to be careful though. We only have one or two sets, and if mm -hmm. you announce it, and there's four or five people that want it. They have to sit together. They have to sit together. So, well, they can sit because there's one ear each. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the school <laughs> system. And made sure after that that he could hear. Can you hear me? Yes. So, <laughs> okay. Good. Well, the well, microphones are cheap. Um, but you're right. Yeah. Could have been. A, he was. That was the problem. I I, I kind of no, heard. Wait. Um, and There's that that was that was that. Okay. If you want to move along. Um, I think Gretchen had uh, uh, yeah, some like comments. Something. Didn't you put together some? Well, I did. Issues for her uses. uses. I passed the them uses. out. Yeah. 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 This is the, I don't want these. Let's, yeah. yeah, and I guess this all, a lot of this came to my mind when we had the hotel um, that came up for a, a special use permit, and I was getting a lot of comments from neighbors since it backed up to our neighborhood, you, you know, their concerns about what would be adjoining their properties. And so I started looking at the things in BG that could possibly, adjo you know, adjoin um, residential. And, and some of them I just thought, 
I don't know how appropriate those those are. And so I just thought I I pulled some of the stuff out of the um, out of the allowed use table and just thought it might be worth talking about whether if you have BG that's right next to, to residential, are these uses that you would want or should we make some of them you know, special use permits? Or? or is it easier or a better solution to um, increase buffer requirements when it abuts residential and that way, Kurt's shaking his head no, but that way it would come up as a variance and then you could deny the variance for the buffer which would essentially limit some of those uses. A lot of these we looked at what the county was doing. So um, some of these specific uses and I think the biggest things that you're concerned about from a resident point is noise. Mm -hmm. light noise. Pollution. Noise and light, I right. would say. So light we cover pretty well with the photometric plant. Uh, the, the, we still have like the Arizona dark skies. Our, our limits are very low compared to everybody around us. But um, that's what you just got to figure out. Do you like what the real, what I don't kind of want to get away from, which we got away from in the last UDO was a million special uses. Only because right. each one has to come in and they have to apply. I think it's better um, if there's some concerns that we kind of do them like we have here with the supplemental standards to limit it. I think helps. And if it's a certain use, you worry about noise, maybe they have a bigger buffer or they're required to uh, have a certain acre to kind of get them off of uh, some of those sites. The biggest problem in Snowville is all of our commercial districts but residential. Right. Mm -hmm. I like the bedroom mm -hmm. community. Right. Right. Residents right. came, mm -hmm. they wanted a target, they got a target, then they got everything else they wanted, of readies and all that. So we're kind of, um, maybe we limit them. Like some of these ones that I think really could have a bigger issue like in a, an amusement center vehicle tracks, uh, mm -hmm. Stream, uh, sports, outdoor facility. stuff, yeah. you know, that's going to be really loud. You know, you mm -hmm. put a you put a big uh, acreage requirement on it and then some additional buffers or maybe you want to do special use for some, the most mm -hmm. obscene that could potentially. And I would then, say definitely the most obscene. Right, and then but kind then of step the down the other ones. ones. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, would you really want a, you, you know, place that, boards animals with outdoor runs, right? Yeah, right. I mean, that's the problem. We don't have a lot of BG that doesn't back up to residents, yeah. so they would have to be like, now Pet Paradise, we got lucky. Um, uh, we yeah, got that, a that was a good that like, for that. I can hear these dogs from this pause or whatever mm -hmm. at City Hall yeah. when we start. And like so we do our you walk, don't but want that if you have uh, a neighborhood adjoining yeah, I mean, you could require cities. that they need to, they have uh, distance requirements from residential and keep them in more in the court, and that could work too, like we do liquor 500 feet from a residential parcel measured as the crow flies, and you can do that kind of stuff, right, Chuck? And yeah, we, do, we not have, and I have to, do we not have dissimilar zoning buffers? So we do, okay, but we go there. What, I think her, uh, Councilwoman Schultz's uh, concern is that even at 60 feet, a dog kennel is going to be obscene. Oh, yeah. So I've, I've litigated one of those in the county. We had, mm -hmm. in fact, it's funny, mm -hmm. last night I was at, at a commission meeting or something different, and what they had done was it was um, it was a um, mobile, home, mobile home park that we represent, mm -hmm. and they were putting, a, not a pet paradise, but a kennel right next to it, and those folks didn't want it. And ended up, what happened was they um, uh, did a one-year special use and made them renew it every year. Oh, to see how their to see how they, to see how wow. they they do. Oh yeah, I'm investing a lot of money if I can only yeah. do it one yeah, year. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that pushes out the problem. But it pushes out the problem. So but now these people did. They pay, they did, and actually they they came up again last night. I saw. I would, we, our mobile home park's gone now, so. Oh, <laughs> Wait. Well, Amazon came in, so they, they, they're buying um. everything up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could you can do that's a, a good way to do it by just the the large buffers. But um, I think I think you're going to have the problem of just having too many special uses. 
knock out the most egregious ones. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Prohibit. I mean, you yeah. can straight prohibit. Yeah. I don't think you want to prohibit dog counts. That's no, I, I'm not but saying prohibit I, I them. I just right. think they have to be far enough removed so maybe we residential. We well, can look down the list again. And we can split because the gym, an indoor gym isn't going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, even a pool law mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of the, if you if associated with like Roadhouse or something, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a problem. But uh, we're likely not going to have a pool ball here. Um, you know, indoor sports to, facility. I was about to say the same thing on a gym, but apparently one opened in a metal building on 78 um, down near the shoe replace. Oh, that's our place. Oh, oh. that's and, a yeah. Mary somebody's place, and she cried when we told her she couldn't have that gym. So, and then, she didn't get called. well, they were they were doing fitness stuff in there, and the neighbors were complaining behind because of the music oh, that they well, were playing a, during yeah, the workouts. Yeah. That's a noise yeah. ordinance. So I mean, yeah. we can attack that, but so not we, during the day. Yeah, I mean, if it's obscene, it's, can't we? Yeah, if it still uh, disturbs or annoys the, the public, we can't. But there has to be a complaint. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> is that ever a problem? I mean, yeah, no, yeah I mean, but... The, but we need to be proactive. Not be proactive. I think we can get to that. Try right. to. Let's split these out into egregious, and then uh, we talk about some limitations, and then only the really biggest ones for special use. I think a bus terminal is fair for a special use permit. Absolutely. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't was, have any I was, problem with I don't with know that. where we'd put one, but I was surprised well, to see that. We but don't have could... much HSB anyways, yeah. but, I mean, you never know. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't want to get caught flat. Flat. Well, and we have some rather small lots that are HSB that are have, are holdovers, right? I think we can go through these and okay. kind of and break them out based on in, severity. In indoor activities, I think um, aren't necessarily <coughs> bowling and and now as mm -hmm. far as uh, electric and gas powered vehicles, they've all gone electric, mm -hmm. and they're they're all they're indoor. Quiet. Because mm -hmm. well, the fumes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're in Myrtle Beach or uh, well, right. 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 Well, right. because right. nobody right. takes their kid in the middle of some who's sane. It takes their kid in the middle of summer to an outdoor <laughs> go kart track because it's or winter. Oh yeah, it's it's horrible. So they figured out that business model that outdoor doesn't work because if it rains, if it's too cold, if it's too hot business drops off, so they've moved them all indoors. But well, we can have that as a requirement. Let's yeah. make it a requirement that they're and, indoors then. And those <laughs> actually um, are potential uses if any of our big boxes go Yeah, because we're going to have, that's right. a whole other conversation, yeah. but there's going to yeah. be a lot of yeah. oh. redevelopment. Well, and I, I would go, I would rather go the route of increasing setbacks or Buffers. requiring more acreage or things like that than the route of making everything special use. Mm -hmm. Only the most okay. egregious. You don't and want all of us can't even imagine how, how There's many There's a few meetings. on here that are fit that category in my opinion. But um, most of the other stuff I think you can you can work with some additional stuff if you need it depending on you just maybe we better define the use. You know, mm -hmm. in the definition, a gym is this, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, a track has to be indoors, and we can we can we can tweak the definitions for the requirements to deal with mainly noise, is what it sounds like. Well, right. and maybe require sound buffering. Right, right. Or well, sound insulation on any yeah. metal buildings. buildings or well, no metal buildings. metal buildings. That one's literally like four. That's the yeah. only income. And we told her she couldn't have a gym there because it had set. I think for maybe a couple days over the non-conforming thing, she mm -hmm. was. I thought they ran AAU or something out of there. That uh, old metal one by the yeah. car lot? No, they're, yeah. they're, she takes whoever can pay. They were doing CrossFit. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CrossFit. Yeah. Like basketball. Yeah. I'm not even sure it's condition space. You know, even if the door's open, open too, too. Right. The music yeah. if, if she were a member <laughs> of the uh, <laughs> chamber, she would have known you could have had no, the silent, silent <laughs> disco <laughs> and everybody had their headphones <laughs> on. And, <laughs> So, so most of these we're going to just go through and... and well, we'll look at them and okay. you know, yeah. kind of separate them into the most extreme and special use permit. And we'll look at maybe the definitions, kind of compare them to uh, our, you know, our colleagues in the county and then add some additional 
stuff to make sure basically the noise is the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. and then, right. No, no offense to anybody, but I would really rather be better than the. Uh, oh, well, we can. I mean, we can look to find Sorry. the baseline. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Music to your ears. Um, on animal care and animal boarding, I would certainly think it would be appropriate to have hours of uh, operation restrictions on that, especially any outdoor um, stuff. Because, right, right. Um, well, how do you do hours of operation on a boarding if they're keeping well, it overnight? Well, then yeah. they got to be indoors. Right. They can't go out at 3 a.m. and have a dog. Right. Well, you just, yeah. And the other thing right. is, you just make the property have to be big enough uh -huh. and the buffer big enough to know what's going on. I mean, if you can hear them from pause yeah. here at City Hall. And that's a weird one, too, because you know? they're in a they're in a shop front. They're in uh -huh. a yeah, that's, space. And that's, space. And that's and all paid in the people. <laughs> this right. weird part. It's, yeah. you know, they do very well there because the demand is high. I've seen people recommending them. They take care of the animals, but. Literally, I mean, those dogs are loud, and it just carries across that parking lot. And well, yeah, but everything, and that's part of it, because everything is paved. So it's, a, <laughs> yeah, it's an echo and, and chamber. Look that way. But still, dead would you people want that? Dead in the no, 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 no. Oh, no, but I'm, I'm just saying. Next to your residential? No. But if you're a big enough, if it's a big enough piece of property with a big enough buffer, nobody's going to build it. Right. You just kind of X those out. You right. know, you don't allow them to continue. And, you know, uh, if, if I've got a five-acre tract and I have to give up three acres for buffer, I'm not building it. Right. We'll figure it out. I think we can get you something back that's good. <coughs> Todd might, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I would on your lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't know if you wanted to um, <coughs> discuss a little bit. This is a whole other conversation, I think, um, about just, I think it's mostly the deliveries and the trash and... Um, kind of what we've dealt with over at Snowville mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um How deep do you really want to go there? Because that's that's uh, that's a, that's kind of like the box to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think the ones we get now, we've been very cognizant yeah. of how to do it. Um, I think you really just have to. To me, it's more about noise ordinance and really locking these folks down. Look how much work it took to get Snow Pavilion. They still don't do it right all the time. You know? Yeah, but as much as we can prevent, I think of, we can. I think ahead we of do time, that so now. we don't have to spend all this right. time Agreed. enforcing and <clears throat> with people complaining at city council meetings. I think we, and I don't think we've been good about this, but I do think we need to make sure the garbage pickup times is a condition of zoning versus just well, a but but a lot of policy the box doesn't have to come in if they're allowed uses so it has right. to yeah be but we can set that conditions. we can we can set that in the code I and mean, we don't have to we can amend the code for any I mean it has to be reasonable of course but right. um I think there's other ways to get that done um to Enforcement is a big one, uh, but uh, just being cognizant of where the dumpsters are, and you guys yeah. always pay attention mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. stuff, and that's the biggest issue. Problem is, is you said every commercial property is next to almost a residential mm -hmm. property, just by the way it develops. So, you know that that's going to be some rub, but I don't think it's going to be as awful as it has been in the past. I, I hope. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else uses? Mm -hmm. Condos. Mm -hmm. You good? Well, some of these uses, I think, attract a lot of traffic too. Perhaps um, you, you know, I'm thinking of the extreme sports facilities. And the, <coughs> I mean, just what is an extreme sports facility? I, I, oh, skateboarding. Skateboarding and rollerball. I mean, <clears throat> no more than a shopping center. Honestly, yeah, less. Probably way less. Uh, that's the biggest issue is if we start really regulating zoning based on, on traffic, as long as they're on a corridor, we'll, we will box ourselves out of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you don't want these on the auxiliary roads, 70, mm -hmm. 124, mm -hmm. you know, not somewhere, maybe Lenore Church in a manufacturing zone, but definitely not on your side streets, you know. Well, let's do it as much I'll, to I'll, prevent problems I'll, I'll as we can. I'll pull some out and give yeah. you some ideas okay. and we can, we can make the changes. And we can kind of re-engage with these other guys at Rosebud, 
and we can build that in. Do we have a comprehensive plan update coming to uh, 2024? We have yeah. to have that done, so we'll probably start on that at the beginning of next year. That's right. So we'll have an opportunity to Seems really like set that <laughs> yeah. the town center Comes right around again. That piece of it done, and then reflect and see what works, and you can kind of take it from there. It may get some better uh, citizen engagement too. Well, I, yeah, I. I think going forward, I'd like to see a lot of our density happen in the town center. I agree, district, 100%. Right. Yeah. And anything happening in these outlying areas needs to be less intensive. Right. More <laughs> dense. It's going to be held at a very high standard. Mm -hmm. And you're going to leave out a lot of problems <clears throat> um, outside of traffic in Gwinnett because it's. Well, everywhere. it's everywhere, so. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing when people are complaining about the growth traffic and like, where have you been the last yeah. 10 years? I Drive mean, to Logan, you want to see traffic. Oh, it's, it's worse. Awful. It's that's worse than here. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's bad yeah. there, too. It took me three lights to get across 20. Yeah. And I was just yeah. Like, oh. yeah. It's just in their building, the county is building residential units as fast yes, as they, they can go. And they're still not caught up. That's what's crazy is the demand well, just driving these right. things. they're not developers just, are building them and, well people are buying them right at obscene prices yeah. so mm -hmm. i mean yeah. that's the thing if people are buying them <clears throat> there's a demand and there's mm -hmm. it's still crazy i yeah. don't you can't afford it in the house anymore that's crazy but. it's a good thing you have a palace already oh yeah my big <laughs> single family ranch house i do have Outdoor three, recreation. three quarter three quarters of an acre somewhere mm -hmm. like that <laughs> um, God, there was something that popped into my mind and it went away. I have a 9.97. Yeah, I like my property. Yeah. Uh, not all everybody likes them like that. I couldn't live in an apartment. Oh, I did in college and I like that. Yeah. Oh, um, when we when we do have mixed use development, that uh, redevelopment in the or the nodes, if at all possible, it would be nice to put the multifamily more towards the middle and use hide sing, it, single single family. Well, not necessarily hide it from the streets, but where it abuts, um, dissimilar oh. uses, oh. A step yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, um, right. That makes sense. Some of the bigger issues come from the closest residents. Well, I get um, it. I mean, I agree. I don't know, but it, I would assume. You'd be less upset if oh next to me there's going to be a house or a townhouse rather than a three-story three-story right. apartment I agree. building. I agree. So just and that's just that's yeah. Just I know, but they don't seem to think about that when they propose it. And and what know, about what about roofs? How big a roof can we have on this? Oh, <laughs> that would, here he goes. No, no, uh, that's yeah. maybe. No, I was going to say maybe mm -hmm. if a structure. A residential or a commercial, like the old housing for old people or whatever it's called now. We don't call if, it that anymore. Yeah, if if it gets above <laughs> a certain persons. square footage, our our older person. If it gets Did above a certain, for? if it gets above above a certain square footage, I think we need to require it to be two stories. Otherwise, they just look like. It just looks weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I understand. We can so, look at some of those architectural standards too. Yeah. Um, so Josh, put your thinking cap on that, because even if it's just you know some single story raising this two story, I don't know that that'll ever come up after that development's done. But what are you talking about? Uh, Crestview and seventy eight and. Um, Actually, I was it's driving. Manor, Manor. Can you tell us a little more about? The, I wasn't at the planning commission meeting. I wouldn't either. Oh, um, okay. But he knows a guy. But he I know a guy. A guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you'll send that out to, I can get it. Yeah, out. I mean, it should be in my history, but I don't know how to pull up history. Melissa, um, here I'll I'll find it. History. Yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> That's a hard one, isn't it? 20 burgers to try right now in Atlanta. That was a hot topic there. Um, yeah, actually. Um, it's a list. Greg's right. Yeah. Probably eaten every one of them, too. The site is Manor, M A N O R, Lake. Dot dev? A N dot com. 
Yeah, it's supposed to be .dev, but it's, it's not. And when you, I'll, I'll go away. There we go. I'll pull it up, and you can see the. I'll get the information and send it out for you guys. Or you send it out if you want. It's up to you. Well, show me. Yeah, it's, it's just, um, I was driving Brad over to Gwinnett Online and came around a corner, some little cut through um, that I take, and I was like, wow, that is a lot of roof. And he said, yeah, that looks horrible. And it was some uh, memory care place that's so on the corner of 29. Manor Lake? Manor Lake, yep. And um, they got six in Georgia now and yeah. three building. Uh, pretty <clears> nice, <throat> but there is a lot of roof. Yeah, yeah. And for some reason it didn't. Why do they pitch them like that? I don't understand. I they don't... need the oh. space for. Go away. Manor Lake, Australian Labrador. That's what I got. Manor Lake, Australia. What was the website? It, it is be Manor Lake Dev. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Manor Lake yeah. Dev dot com. Okay. So, Dave and I got puppy dogs. Yeah. So <laughs> there we go. So there is a slideshow of the roof farm, and they just um, we this is going to front on seventy eight. Oh, for, yeah, for you, I don't have a site that is a lot of and yeah, it'll that'll be kind of the layout. I think. Right, well, but the method and it's a and, and it's, it's actually going to sit. It's a fifty-five and over. Oh, yeah, right, it's yeah. this is a assisted down. care. Oh, assisted it's going to sit care. down, right. so it'll even be more just roof. They are going to build it up. Yeah, but it, it's amount. it's yeah. it's. I got you. I, I don't um, disagree. We just don't require less of a pitch. Bring the pitch angle. We can look at bringing the pitch right. angle down. Well, and, and, and I suggested... Uh, I think they're going for kind of like the craftsman kind of... Yeah, but blend. when oh, when it's 60 feet deep yeah. and 100 feet long yeah. and only eight, 9 feet high at the eave, you're, all you're going to see is roof. Looks like a hanger. Yeah. Um, which, one are you, which one are you looking at? I'm looking at a slideshow that's going through all of them. It's the... On the main it's page. Mountains. Yeah. Just the main one. It goes right through a slideshow. Just the main one there. Sorry, I beat oh, up the right. microphone. Um, and then you can click on them and see, but it's it's just. HSB. Uh, what is like yeah. that? HSB. HSB. What's that? Highways. Well, and that's highways. they took that from the most uh, attractive whatever that means. angle means possible. <laughs> and okay. that isn't necessarily going to be what you see like when you drive down 78. And so my, my point is from our development <coughs> rate going forward, if it's going to be above a certain kind of square footage, may require it to be two story or story and a half or something just to break that up. Hmm. And then you're going to have to. Sorry. Yeah. You're going to have to. It's a it's a pitch, right? Because otherwise, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's what was originally there, and then evidently one of the other issues was uh, the people in Gladstone Landing were upset because the lack of buffer between their place and this new development. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of why I, uh, back in the day said no, that needs to be built built before the attached housing, and that didn't work. Um, so now they're all going to complain because there's going to be all this development in their backyard. Like, Which was all intended to be, intended yeah. to be that way anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is still landing? They weren't as bad. It's, um, it's the oh. town homes um, right there. Um, 78. Yeah. At um, Crestview. The 55 oh, okay. 55 <clears throat> <and> better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like how they call it or 55 better. or better yeah. now. So, well, market. That's good market. Um, Course, speaking of yeah. speaking of housing for yeah. older persons or whatever, our house, I'm, yeah, whatever no. we call it. No, now. ROs. Heading into the old people category. Yeah, you you might be interested in knowing that. Well, it's a lot of roof. I think I sent y'all information that that deal with Wendover for at Snellville Methodist that fell yeah. through. Yeah. But they're holding a church council meeting this Sunday after church to decide if they want to, you know, continue to pursue this with Wendover or if they want to look for a new developer. I just thought you'd be interested in knowing that. What was the problem with Wendover? They their application wasn't approved by um, DCA. DCA, yeah, no, Department of Community of Affairs. Johnson. They missed it by half a point. Mm. They missed the deadline. The 
the first the time they missed the deadline, the second time they missed it by half a point, and and I know some of the reason they missed it was lack of public transportation. Um, I can't remember what some of the other issues were now. <clears throat> probably application quality too. It <laughs> probably had a lot to do with it. Well, I I, I talked to uh, Quincy about it on at uh, on Monday. No, at at something that we had within the last few weeks, maybe it was Commerce Club, and talk to them about getting together once they figure out whether or not they're staying with um, Wendover and working together to try to get some affordable housing because we may be able to come up with some solutions. Yeah. Because it's an important project for the, for the city and the community. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody have anything else? Then I will take a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. There's a motion. Is second. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. It is six in favor. Well, thank you all for spending this time. Yay. Jason, come over here with drink. Oh. <laughs>